Was my comment in the video not good enough? Fine then, new series, gaming on a free OS. What's up everyone? Dan- Um, that was awkward. Welcome back to CompTV, a place you can go for all things tech. I've done a few builds on this channel already, but in the comments section there seems to be a common thread. Pun, very much intended. Where people don't seem to get that you don't really need to pay for an OS anymore, especially when you're on a tight budget. Even an extra $20 can mean the difference of 20 or even more FPS, so spending as much money as you can on the hardware is critical. So, can you still play your favorite titles at maximum performance on a free operating system? Let's answer that. I'll save the best for last, but on this episode we're going to take a look at SteamOS. Popularized of course by Valve's hugely popular game hub, Steam. Featured on Steam boxes and custom builds alike, this OS is kept online to download for free. For each episode I'll give a brief tutorial on how to actually get and install each OS, and then benchmark and compare the performance of the games to see if the OS is a viable choice. Specifically, we will be comparing the average FPS of Rocket League, City Skylines, and Shadow of Mordor. What system will I be using, you ask? Oh, you didn't ask? Whatever. The system we will be utilizing is the $250 budget build featured in the card above. This system was built in late 2016 and performed very well on the 1080p ultra setting benchmarks that we threw at it. So without further ado, let's install the SteamOS and compare the benchmarks. The requirements you'll need to install SteamOS are a 64-bit capable processor, 4GB or more of RAM, 200 plus gigabytes of hard drive space, and an NVIDIA or Radeon 8500 or higher GPU. Of course, you'll also need a USB stick for the install that must be at least 4GB recommended, and another computer will be necessary to load the appropriate files onto the USB. You can use a CD too, I'm sure, but we won't cover that here. To start, navigate to the SteamOS download page linked in the description and download the automated installer zip the first option given. Again, take note that you have to meet the system requirements technically or you'll run into issues when using the installer. I even had issues installing this on modern hardware, so keep that in mind. After that is done, format your 4GB or larger USB stick to FAT32, and when that's done, extract the files from the zip onto the USB drive. Then plug in your USB stick on the target machine and set the BIOS to load the USB stick first. Every BIOS or UEFI is different, so use your motherboard's manual to figure out how you would do this on your system. Along with that line of thought, also set your BIOS to boot from the UEFI if that option is available on your system, and then reboot. From here, select the automated installer, and the system should do the rest of the work for you. I'm assuming you only have one hard drive, but if you have more than one, I do suggest only having the SteamOS hard drive plugged in for the install, since it'll wipe everything off of it. Also as a troubleshooting tip, if method 1 doesn't work for you, try method 2 which requires only an additional 2 or 3 steps when starting the installation. Either way, you should end up at a blue screen with some options to continue when the installation is complete. Then you can unplug your USB drive and select the reboot option to go into the OS. So did the installation go well on my system? Absolutely not. Right as I was installing the OS onto my hard drive, it became apparent that the motherboard was not liking the OS at all. After the install was complete, the system would not even recognize the operating system. A quick Google search would confirm that older Lenovo motherboards have issues running SteamOS. As a result, I had to actually swap out the $250 budget build for the system I built for my brother, link again in the card above. It features an FXCC300 and Radeon HD 7870. The main benefit here was the newer UEFI interface as opposed to a normal BIOS. So problem solved, right? Wrong. When installing the SteamOS, I got another error. This time I was stuck on one of the OS loading screens. The culprit? The OS was not compatible with the 7800 series card. Remember the requirements we mentioned above? I was going to mention trying to swap out that card for the GTX 1050, but I'm not even going to go there. Yeah, I had issues there too. Well, my final solution was to swap out the 7870 for the GTX 460 originally in this build and then cross my fingers. Finally, the system booted after running the automated installer. <sighs> So, once all that is done, voila, you have your own personal Steam box, and you didn't pay a single cent for the OS. Unfortunately, Steam OS doesn't support every game, and unless you tweak it, it may not even have the game you want to play. I may address how to get even more games on this OS and other OSs in the future, so if you're interested, please let me know in the comments. Okay, and after all that explanation, the question is whether or not the process was actually even worth it. Let's check out the benchmarks and let you decide. The only controller I have is an Xbox 360 wireless, which will require extra installations, so I conducted the benchmarks with keyboard and mouse. Though, Steam does recommend their Steam Remote for the optimal user experience. For starters, the OS ran at a gorgeous 60fps, and navigating the interface was pretty intuitive. 
As soon as I opened the first game, however, the situation changed dramatically. In fact, the lag and stutter was so bad that I decided to take the average FPS of the rest of the benchmarks at 720p medium settings. This was so we could even get a reasonable baseline for the benchmarks. And how did SteamOS do? Rocket League felt like playing in slow motion, and even with these severely gimped settings it only managed to pull an average of 14 FPS. It was extremely unplayable, and was the most disappointing since this hardware can definitely pull off ultra settings on this game with a different OS. City Skylines, a more CPU heavy game, managed to squeeze double that FPS, surprisingly enough, again at 720 medium with an average of 30. This began to paint a more clear picture of how SteamOS utilizes the GPU. Finally, Shadow of Mordor shocked me the most when I opened it and it ran at a smooth 60 FPS, only until I realized that Steam had optimized its settings to 960 by 640, which jumping it back to our benchmark standard left us with its real average of 30 FPS. Conclusion time. I guess I'd have to say I'd need more time to tinker with the OS and especially using better hardware. My experience was dreadful and 80% of my time was spent on the installation alone, not to mention that the performance was abysmal, making it feel even less worth it. To be fair, I am a tinkerer and would recommend playing around with the Steam OS since trial and error like I did here is how we get to learn more and be more well-rounded with all kinds of tech and software. And I'm sure some of the issues I have were my fault and could have been easily avoided with more foreknowledge. But I still have to say in terms of ease of use and hardware performance, I really don't think Steam OS is worth your time. Also, don't forget that your game and hardware might not even be compatible with this operating system which gives it even less appeal. Though there are again multiple ways to tinker with it and possibly make your game compatible. Ain't nobody got time for that. Overall, if you're only playing games you know will perform well on SteamOS or you're wanting a no-cost console-like gaming experience, then feel free and try it out. But I'm really looking forward to moving on to other OSs in the future free OS series episodes, so be sure to check on those videos soon, and I really hope we don't have experience like this again. Well, thanks for fighting through that with me. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more content like this. Also hit the notification bell below where my notification squad at to be notified of the next few episodes of the series and comment below with any suggestions, questions, or thoughts you might have. The budget build video will be released very soon with some much more rewarding benchmarks, so keep your eyes peeled for that and don't forget to hit me up on Twitter and Discord where we share some insane hardware deals and also game together. Oh, and in case you didn't know, I'm Lee from CompTV. TV.